Look, you haven't got much time because you're a busy man. Um, mm. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak uh, a pleasure. on this. Um, really, I just wanted to ask you about this Hope Not Hate leaflet that has been distributed across Rochdale, um, which I just, I, I am totally blown away at the, at, at the content of it. I will read it out just so people who don't know it can, can hear it. It says, the dangerous and divisive, it's got a picture of nope over your face. It says, George Galloway has supported many of the world's worst dictators. His workers' party is full of anti-Semites, racists and conspiracy theorists. Galloway has no answers to Rochdale's problems as politics add division to communities. Vote out Galloway on 4th of July. And they're boasting that they've had loads of people distributing these all over Rochdale. It sounds um, more like hate than hope. Hope not hate or hate not hope. Uh, that's the big question in this election, actually. Uh, yeah, first of all, we have to treat their claims about how widely they have uh, distributed this material with a pinch of salt, because uh, despite trawling the country for volunteers, they had precisely four people uh, doing this on uh, Saturday, and they only do it on Saturdays and Wednesdays. So partly they're exaggerating their uh, reach. Of course, they're wildly exaggerating the impact of little pieces of yellow paper pushed through somebody's door. Uh, and uh, you and I both know you don't get round that many doors, especially when it's raining, as it has been incessantly in Rochdale in recent weeks. So uh, it's uh, important to keep it in perspective, but it is absolutely unlawful. It is totally undemocratic and it represents a political scandal because we have now obtained uh, secretly tape recorded uh, conversations uh, amongst the hate not hope uh, people uh, in which uh, inter alia uh, multiple breaches of the law are revealed. So uh, there is a very strict limit on what they can spend as non-party campaigners. Uh, that limit is £700, which was busted with uh, the leader, Nick Lowell's salary uh, and his railway fares up to Rochdale. Uh, the printing of the leaflet, we happen to know the price, uh, and we can only take his word for it that the analytics that he's invested in, his words, are, and he's on tape saying this, very expensive, unquote. So if they're very expensive, then he's already bust the £700 limit and can campaign no more. Secondly, as non-party campaigners, they are legally obliged not to campaign for any candidate. But again, on the tape recording, they repeatedly state uh, that they are sharing their campaigners with Labour and that they are, of course, trying to get Labour in, in Rochester, which is a breach, not of election expenses, but a breach of the criminal law. So once the newspapers have digested the tape recording, and some of the big papers are now doing that, uh, then I think this will blow up into quite a major scandal. Not least because it's not only me that they're doing it against. They're doing it against Farage and the Reform Party, who have uh, good lawyers uh, and are determined to uh, root this totally undemocratic practice up. If Labour want to say things about me, they should say them. And they should say them on their own literature in their own name to import the Israel lobby because that's what hate not hope are into our town and accuse me of being divisive when in fact it is they with their uh, unvarnished support for Israel in its uh, uh, crimes over many many years it is they who are creating division nothing much more divisive than supporting a genocide. Hate Not Hope 
is funded by a charity which is in turn funded by all of the biggest donors of uh, the Israel lobby in Britain. And it's a big budget, it's a million pound budget. But one of the funders of Hate Not Hope is the British government. So we have a situation here where the Tory government is funding a charity which funds a campaign organization which is out campaigning for Labour against me. Now they say we live in a democracy, but that just makes a mockery of it. I was just going to point out that four of the directors are associated with Labour. I think three of them are actually Labour candidates, uh, which just seems... Indeed. and all um, of them are associated with the Labour Friends of Israel. They don't make any bones about that. They are uh, supporters of Israel which is why they're so keen to defeat me. Of all the candidates, they could have yeah. done this against, the one they're doing it against is me. You could call it a badge of honour. So look, I just want to ask a couple more questions. One is that you're not featuring at all in these leaders' debates, um, and the media are just not featuring the Workers' Party really at all mm. either. Mm. Um, I mean, does that show how scared they are of the ideas that your, your party I would say so. I, I can only infer that. How, what, how else am I to infer? A party with one MP, one elected MP, that's one more than reform, with more local councillors elected than reform. And I'm not on the TV, but reform are never off the TV. Uh, that's a pretty clear indication of that. But here's the good news. I'm going to be one hour, just me and him, with Piers Morgan next week. That'll be fireworks, I promise you. All right. And, and the, one, the one last, honestly, the last question, I know you've got to go. Um, I've noticed that there are, a lot, and there are lots and lots of independent candidates who are being put up and often splitting the vote mm. against Labour. Mm. Um, do you think there are dirty tricks from um, any, any parties uh, maybe any parties <laughs> to leave with, 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 without a doubt uh, I'm not saying that every independent candidate who's splitting the vote uh, is working for uh, MI5 of course but they might as well be because they're playing the same role they are splitting the vote to let Labour in and that's uh, reprehensible and in constituencies where it turns out that their split vote was the difference between Labour getting in or being out, they'll never be forgiven. Like in Ireland, people whose families took the British state's soup 120 years ago are still known as soup takers. Their great-great-great-grandchildren are called soup takers because their great-great-great-grandfather took the British government's soup in the uh, famine. Uh, the same will be true uh, if, if candidate X allows a Labour genocide candidate in because they would not stand down for candidate Y who had a better claim, was in the field already and campaigning already, they will never be forgiven. And some of them are beginning to realise that. In Blackburn, for example, if the Labour candidate passes and Craig Murray is second and the unexpected independent, let me put it that way, because he's a lawyer, I have to choose my words carefully, the unexpected independent, his vote is the difference between Craig winning or Labour winning, he'll be damned in the town and forever.